Hola, Mr. Stone here, and today we're going to be talking about T distributions. Up to now, we've talked a lot about Z scores and how about how we can gather information based on the mean and the uh, standard deviation of the whole population. But quite honestly, that is quite difficult to get most of the time. More often, you've got a sample. And based on the sample, you're able to extrapolate some sort of uh, likelihood of things happening for the whole population. You look at the little guy, and then you're able to kind of make an estimate of what the whole big picture looks like. That is where the beauty of T distributions fits in. So I have a sample right here of average water usage of households in gallons. All right, so we've got all of this right here, and we want to, based on this, make some sort of estimate about what we can say about the average water usage for a whole population of people that are like these people. And the first thing we need to do is get the standard deviation, which thanks to the power of your TI-84 calculator, there actually is a way to do this uh, pretty simply. So, using the power of our TI-84 uh, calculator, I've been able to get a few things here. My standard deviation for all these guys is 21.09. Notice I'm not using sigma here. Why not? Well, this is just my standard deviation of this sample. I don't know anything about the standard deviation of my whole population just yet. I do know that I happen to have 10 things right here. So n equals 10. My sample size is 10. I can take the mean of all these things. Here is our good old friend x bar. x bar is 157. Now, I want to get the standard error for what my uh, standard deviation will be. So I'm going to use a sigma. And a little x bar right there telling me that's where I'm getting the, uh, the data from. And I'm going to get a little hat because, well, it kind of looks cool. But also because it tells us that this is not exactly my sigma. It is the standard error. And this simply is determined by your standard deviation over the square root of your sample size and the number of things you've got. Solve that, we've got 21.09 over the square root of 10, that equals 6.67. That is our standard error. Now, using this and using this guy called a T distribution table, we're able to figure out where our mean for a whole population is likely to be given the data that we've got. So let's say I want to do this. Uh, let's move a little bit here. Move. Moving on left or right. Or probably your right, my left. That sounds about right. All right. So we've got, let me get us not in the glare here. Whoa. All right. So we've got uh, our data right here. Let's say I want to know with a 90% confidence interval where the mean of my population of all this, uh, this sample is from is likely to be located. I can set a range. Our t distribution is similar as my board drawing here. It's similar to our normal distribution curve. A little bit different, but if you are able to approximate uh, with enough sampling here. So I've got a lower bound here. And my lower bound is simply going to be x bar minus t with my confidence level and then my standard error, the oop, sigma with a little hat of x bar. Now this I get from my, oh, oop, not this one. This I get from my t table. All right. Using that, I'm able to say, OK, you know what? I have 10 data, uh, 10 items there in my sample. So how many degrees of freedom do I have? And no, that is not a uh, 1980s album from Bruce Springsteen. 
But that is instead, uh, quite often it's called df. In this case, it is going to be n minus 1. Okay? It tells us basically, uh, gives us, helps give us a range for where we can expect our uh, lower and upper limit to be. Now, notice I put a c down there. That just is telling me that's based on my level of confidence. So if I want a confidence level of it being in this range of 90%, okay, in that case, I look at my table and it says, oh, oh, that is 1.833. Oh, oh, oh. So given that it is 1.833, I can plug that into here. I already know this. I know this. Boom, I'm just about done. X bar is 157. What? Minus my T score here of 1.833. What is my standard error? 6.67. Calculate it out. This becomes 157 minus uh, 12.23 which gives me 144.77, and I'm still in the frame. Excellent. Now, my upper is pretty much set up the same way. I go x bar plus my t, and then my standard error. Now, plug in 157 plus 1.833, times 6.67, just like I did up there. This becomes 157 plus 12.23, as opposed to minus, which gives me 169.77. Drop the marker, and you are done. So this is, again, how we are able to determine about where our population mean would be. Our population mean would be uh, from, picking up the marker now, mm, from this 144.77 to 169.77. We've got a 90% level of confidence that our population mean of every household that this is a sample from is likely to be in. Not guaranteed, but we can get a pretty good idea where a lot of that data is going to be. All right, review this, bring in your questions, and we will be awesome. Ta-ta.